Chip Kelly finally tells us who's going to start. Congrats, Ethan Garbers. But three quarterbacks are going to play. Three of them. Like for real? Yes. Yes. You are locked on UCLA. Your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to this edition of Locked On UCLA. I'm your host, longtime host now, Zach Anderson, Yacht Simer. It's game week. College football season has basically started, and it's time for the Bruins to take on Coastal Carolina. Thanks for making this episode your first listen each every day. It's free where we get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. So like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for your support throughout the whole summer. The, the journey is over. Now we've got games pretty much every time, every week, until the season which is next May, is over. And then they move to the Big Ten. Craziness, right? This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use Locked On College as your code, and you can get $20 off your first purchase. And if your first purchase is to go to see the UCLA Bruins take on Coastal Carolina, and you're wondering who the heck is the quarterback, Ethan Garbers. Ethan Garbers was named your starter. Or maybe, as Chip Kelly might say, him, say your first snapper. That's probably not what he would say. But well, what does that mean? What does this mean? First snapper. Because he told the media before the Monday practice, yeah, who's going to gonna be your starting quarterback, right? Chip Kelly's been a bit mum, it seems like, from all the writing reports. And just about everything, Dante and Garbers have somewhat pulled away. Schley was in a secondary tier maybe with Martin. But he's the, the transfer. He's got a lot of experience compared to the other two. And then all of a sudden, Chip Kelly says, all three quarterbacks deserve to play. It's been an outstanding battle. They're all earned playing time. So they're playing three quarterbacks this weekend against Coastal Carolina. Maybe a dual quarterback system would have been something, right? With Ethan Garbers and Dante Moore. I'm not sure people expected that, but that m- might have been warranted. But to say three quarterbacks, and I don't want to say anything against Schley or Moore or Garbers, but just the amount of playing time that there actually is, right? Remember, there's already going to be a few less plays with the new rules in college football, moving the time after first downs, as opposed to making it a two-minute first down warning, right? When after two minutes in the first and second half of games. So there's already going to be a little bit less plays, less time. The Bruins play so quickly in the Chip Kelly offense that, you know, subbing quarterbacks on and off, I'm not sure how that's going to execute everything perfectly to really burn out the Coastal Carolina defense. And yet here we are with three quarterbacks. I just don't really know how it's going to work. So Garbers is going to get what Chip Kelly is. He didn't really say he's the starter. He said, yes, he's the starter. He's got the most experience and someone has to get the first snaps. I'm not sure how that's a vote of confidence or it's a vote in confidence in three guys or a lack of confidence that someone stood out in from spring to the end of summer, heading into week one, we've got three quarterbacks. And in my mind, obviously, Garbers had the most experience. I think Chip Kelly was the most comfortable. Earlier in the summer, if you're an everyday, or you would have heard me talk about, hey, like he, he tends to favor veteran guys. So it's probably likely that, while well, I've wanted and vocalized my support for more to start, that he might lean Garbers based on his history. But Schley has the most experience actually on the field in his career. Garbers has the most experience in the Chip Kelly offense learning. He's got that experience, right? Playing in the bowl game and in various opportunities. And then you've got the exciting freshman, Dante Moore, who Chip Kelly said, you know, he's got repetitive accuracy, something he really loved, a good decision maker, just hasn't played in a game yet. So he's shown some great poise and grasp of the offense, very accurate, calm. I'm really excited about him, but obviously not enough to make him the starter or not to trust the true freshman to go out there and play against Coastal Carolina, who he repeatedly said it's a good Coastal Carolina game, good Coastal Carolina team. They're under a new coaching staff, but they still got their three-time quarterback conference player of the year, Grayson McCall, on the other side. Speaking of McCall, kind of in this quarterback thought, the Bruins did have a little mini conversation with McCall. When he was in the portal. So imagine if McCall, who I believe in a various other report somewhere, Kelly was asking about McCall. Yeah, we we talked to him. It didn't get really further, get much further than the early stages of just checking out academia, but the academics of it. 
but he did reach out. So they had some communication, like I talked about in December. So imagine all this nonsense kind of coming together while the Bruins are sitting here with three quarterbacks, and they even had a conversation with the opposition's quarterback, who is the three-time reigning conference player of the year. Oh, man. I just don't know how it's going to work. I just think, obviously, Garbers is going to get the time. Then it should go Dante Moore. And I think Schley will be used in specific packages. But Kelly, when asked the question on how the snap count, the drives are going to work, he said, we'll figure it out by the end of the week. All three of these guys are together, but someone's got to take the first snaps. The key word is first snaps. He wasn't saying like Garbers is this above and beyond. It's all three have deserved it. All three have earned it. Garbers just has to take the first snaps because somebody's got to take the first snap. It, <laughs> and he's never done this. Chip Kelly admitted he's never really done something like this. I'm not sure I've really seen something like this go like this. And maybe he's just messing with this this whole time, right? There'll probably be some sort of three quarterback system, but they all have their design packages. And maybe the battles between Moore and Garbersh and Schley will play, especially since he came here, but maybe in a design, maybe dual threat role of sorts, because he's more of a dual threat guy, I would think, than Garbers and Dante Moore. So needless to say, coming in off the weekend, I'm thinking, all right, how are we going to go? No, the Bruins are going to sit here and go, go play three quarterbacks. All the fans will sit there with little the little roster sheets or maybe training, you know, those little mini player cards they hand out week one almost every year, right? And you're like, who's in? Is that Dante? Everybody gets excited. Garber's all right. Schley, all right. And just trying to see which quarterback is in during the Coastal Carolina game. Late at night. West Coast, national televised, but a lot to say, yeah, we're just trying to beat Coast Carolina and throw three quarterbacks at them. Uh, they got the time. They've got the opportunity to truly draw this thing out until they go to Utah for Pac-12 play. And I know with North Carolina, well, you know, with North Carolina Central coming in uh, in a couple weeks, you only have two true games to figure out before Pac-12 play starts who your quarterback is, right? You've got the San Diego State game. They played Ohio over the weekend, and they won. I think the Bruins should be able to handle the Aztecs, although it is in San Diego State. It'll be a little different there. And then you've got Coastal Carolina. Games that the Bruins will be favored in probably by multiple scores, but they'll be much tougher than what the odds makers and what everybody truly makes of it. I'm just still sitting here in bewilderment. Oh, Garbers is a starter, but actually three quarterbacks. It, it just, it's just so interesting, right? Just when everybody's excited, just name a quarterback. Name somebody, please. And they get three. I could have handled the dual quarterback system. It didn't really matter who it was, I guess. In the end, one of the biggest things that Chip Kelly said about Colin Schley was, I thought Colin was outstanding in the spring. I'm confused. I don't think he was behind anybody. When one of the reporters asked Chip Kelly about, hey, do you think Schley has made some growth? Because it seemed like Schley was behind everybody. And he's like, no, I, I, I'm I, confused, which could either be coach speaking. Let me be real with you guys. I've talked, you know, broadcasting football games. I've talked to head football coaches. And sometimes they'll look you in their face and tell you things. And I'm not going to really say this is what Chip Kelly is doing, but you can look in their face and they'll tell you something. And it might not happen. It might happen. It might be one play that Schley plays but he's hyping him up just to get him excited because he's getting this one play when in reality it's more versus Garbers. I'm not saying that's what's happening right now. I'm not saying Garbers has, is going to get 75% of the snaps, but I've talked to football coaches who are mum, who might be coordinators now at big college football universities, and I'm not going to name names, but they, it just, it's all coach speak, right? It, it is all coach speak. And until we get closer to the day and Chip Kelly answers more questions later in the week, or we just game one, we'll see who's on the field and how it works. It, it, coaches just do things like this. I've just <laughs> three quarterbacks is the most aggressive. And I have seen ridiculous games where play, teams play a lot of quarterbacks, but to come out and straight say it, we're playing three quarterbacks it is just nuts for week one. The Garbers will take the first snaps. Uh, yeah. If you're having questions at home, I've got just as much, just as much questioning of what's going on. Not that it's bad that they're all together, but someone's got to separate. Someone has got to separate themselves. And this could simply be Chip Kelly being wary of starting the true freshman. Other places, they would just throw them out there, get everybody excited, throw touchdowns. Garber's just put in some good competition. And then Schley, 
is going to be in there for certain things. I am very confident on that. What those things, what those plays, what that role is specifically, I just not entirely sure about that right now. It, it's just goodness gracious, you know, it, it just is what it is. But I, I can't think of anything other than that. It, it's just, a, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out, you know, stay with us all week. Well, now we have to prep the offense. Here's this quarterback, this quarterback, and this quarterback. And oh, hopefully the defense plays well against their quarterback, who UCLA looked at for a second. What a, what a way to start week one, right? Exciting, confusing, and UCLA football in the finest. We're going to come back, talk more about Lazar Stefanovic because he wasn't always wanting to play basketball, and he might most importantly be the godsend that is important to UCLA's success this year in 23-24 to 24 for the UCLA basketball team. What is a little bit more of his story? UCLA has been posting stories about their individual athletes, especially the basketball team, as they're on this trip. They can get more stories, type something up, and I thought this one was interesting about Lazar Stefanovic. I know it's football week one, but just after the headache of the three quarterback system, we're, we're going to pause on that for a moment today. All right, basketball coming up next on the Locked On UCLA podcast. Well, it's now time for your game changer of the week brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Because much like you know, Lazar Stefanovic, we're going to talk about. Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers actually taste good. And they've changed the game for non-alcoholic beers because they actually taste good, full flavor, well-crafted, and just like a full-strength beer. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning. They brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, golden, sours, and more. And they're constantly releasing limited edition material. They're fit for all time, so you can drink them anywhere, anytime, and make any activity even more enjoyable, including like the big games this weekend. You can find them, you can find Athletic in stores, online at bars all around the country, and go to a store near you. Buy them online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers, use the code Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's the code locked on L O C K E D O N at checkout 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer. Exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Beer Brewing Company fit for all times. Welcome back, Locked On UCLA, second segment. We're talking Lazar Stefanovic, right? I was already really hyping him up after UCLA's win in their last game against, not Madrid, I, it's blank off the top of my head, the, the Valencia basket team who the Bruins put away late in their Spain trip. And while the Bruins don't play in the early, they do find their final game coming up. It's Lazar Stefanovic, who when he was an early teenager, based on this UCLA Bruins.com article, it was the Stefanovic who wanted to play soccer, right? He was wanting to be a guy that played soccer more than basketball growing up of Serbia. He enjoyed playing both basketball and soccer. And just think, the six seven Lazar Stefanovic, who is athletic, a shooter, who can play multiple roles, wants to fill multiple roles this season for UCLA, wanted to play soccer. Basketball was something that my parents wanted me to do at first, as it's more of an indoor sport. Stefanovic was quite quoted back then I wanted to play soccer and they're more in favor of basketball since it was inside and I always seemed to keep getting sick as a kid that's an interesting little tidbit Stefanovic said but after playing soccer for two or three years it was a hard decision to make and he was in his room and he said he was flipping coins to see like okay if it's heads it's basketball if it's tails it's soccer he flipped the coin and he said I don't like that so he'd flip a coin a hundred times to make a decision whether he would play basketball or soccer. Chip Kelly honestly could have done this for his quarterback. Hey, let's flip a coin. Who's going to get the first snaps? Obviously, he did it. Or maybe he got some weird coin that was like, all right, we're going to do heads, make a starter, tails, make everybody's life go a little crazy. This is Chip Kelly I'm joking about, right? Flip a coin. And three quarterbacks. There it is, right? That's that's obviously not what happened. 
And that's obviously not what happened with Stefanovic because apparently he talks about how his but him and his parents went through and consulted a handful of doctors saying, all right, how tall is Lazar going to grow? And they said, all right, he's about to be 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and they eventually said, all right, basketball is a really good route for Lazar. And in the end, he's like, I was better at basketball than soccer anyway. And he played on the top team in Serbia. Really loved tennis when he was younger. But eventually, as the all-pack 12 freshman team selection in 21 to 22 at Utah, averaged nearly nine points a game, three rebounds, and a couple assists during his first two years in Utah. And then all of a sudden, said, all right, I'm going to choose to go to UCLA, where Mick Cronin has already been quoted as saying he's a godsend for us. For us to have a guy like Lazar, who has already been trained and well-coached, for my sanity, yeah, it's good to have him. He knows what it takes to be a successful player at this level. And in the first two games, Stefanovic has averaged 18.5 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 steals per game, leading the team in steals, I believe rebounds, points, double-digit efforts, a double-double, and he has been the guy that's played the most minutes on the floor. Cronin has kept him on for over 35, 36 minutes in each of the first two games, despite the Bruins have clear control at the end of both games. So the big thing he's talked about is being able to relate to all the international players, right? He talked about it's a special thing what UCLA did. These guys have had similar experiences to mine, all the way from Abona, to Fible, Vide, Burke, Nuba, Mara. There, there's so many different players. And he says it's easier, Lazar being quoted in this UCLA article, it's easier to talk at the talk to them about certain things when I know what they've been through and how they've been coached. I know the system that they played in. So I know when they do something on the court and know exactly why they did it and what they were thinking. It's a great experience for all of us. It's good for the culture. It's good for everyone on the team, both our American and non-American players, which means it's already been talked about that Lazar has been growing as the vocal leader, whether you see various people trying to cover the team who are in Spain, even myself, referring to what Cronin's talked about, Stefanovic. So he's almost taken it upon himself as one of the older guys. I know Nuba is two now, being the, you know, the guy, the sixth year, the, the extra COVID year. But Stefanovic has taken on his role like, hey, I can be this bridge who's already played a couple of years, had some success, know what's going through their minds, and help bring the chemistry together, which might be a reason why he's going to earn the starting role for UCLA and how he said, if you're going to play multiple positions and do multiple things, your coach is probably going to play more. So he's seen how that logic works, right? For Cronin, if you're going to only do one thing, offense or defense, it's not going to help you get on the floor. You need to play defense and you got to be able to do something offensively, contribute, which is where Stefanovic understands being that veteran presence on the floor that, hey, if I can do more things, people might think of me as just a shooter, but he says, I know that most people think that I'm just a standstill shooter, but I would say I'm far away from that. That's not my game. I like to play on the ball and off the ball. I like to make the right reads and be in positions where I can make a decision. That's the main part of my game, constantly being able to make right decisions. And whether it's scoring, passing, or cutting, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Mostly the quote there, it's about making the right play in every single moment that you can. That talks. That's a mature veteran answer who understands what he needs, Sounds like someone who is going to fit in quite well with Mick Cronin in terms of learning, growing, and you know it's funny seeing what you guys throw out in the comments sometimes about where we expect the starting lineup to go. They could do the three super huge lineup, right? Bonamara, Burke, and then two guards. But that would leave Stefanovic out, right? Stefanovic is clearly going to play, and I'm not sure the Bruins are going to go with the twin posts or the twin posts and Burke at the same time. Uh, even though they're without Bona, Mara, and Burke right now to figure it out, Savanovic is going to be the glue for this team. And it's interesting to see how he's already seen this. He was a 35% three-point shooter last year in about 28, 29 minutes, averaging nearly 10 minutes per game. 10 minutes game, 10 points per game, 28 minutes per game in 32 games. And, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun for him. Was, he's actually gonna go see his parents after the end of the Spain trip. He's gonna go visit them on vacation, see them, and then he'll come back to UCLA. And then that's when the fun starts for Mick Cronin and the Bruins. Yet here we are. Stefanovic is the glue. He's seen it all. He's understanding where these other players are coming from, and is really setting the tone. We believe in the Spain trip. 
for UCLA on the court because they're not practicing. McCronin's already said we're going and sightseeing. We're we're enjoying our time and then playing games. We're reverse engineering how to grow this team without practice. And we know McCronin wants to hammer it in during practice. And that's just not what they get. It's a fun experience. Grow the team. Put some players, some people in just different environments that they've never been in with different people, different cultures, which is the whole point of this trip. And Stefanovic has kind of seen it all, grown, gone to Ser from Serbia, battling what sport he wanted to play, going to Utah, Salt Lake City, which is still vastly different from Westwood and Los Angeles, right? And just growing and wanting to be this guy, that glue, who understands it takes multiple roles. You've got to do multiple things and be good at various aspects and be able to help Cronin do different things. And Mick Cronin, I remember right before they left for Spain, we like to limit and we don't want to put too much in our younger players, right? Asking them to do multiple roles. But as Stefanovic has already referenced here in this article, to play more, you want to do that, which is why Cronin had talked about, yeah, we want Mac to focus on scoring the ball. So these younger players will be probably asked to do simpler tasks, right? When it comes to Mac, go get a bucket, which is probably why we didn't see a high assist number for UCLA for those first two games on made shots. Or might be someone like a Fible. Hey, I know you're athletic. Go play some defense. Let's see you turn into that Jalen Clark like defender that Cronin's already referred to him as. Stefanovic, there might be a little bit more bulk in the load. Cronin might be a little harder on him and have him to be that extra voice, that extra coach. Well, the Bruins already have those extra coaches for skills training in the expanded coaching staffs. And he's going to be that coach on the floor, which will be important for UCLA. And it's a nice little article that the Bruins posted about. His growth, flipping coins to decide if he's playing basketball or soccer. I think he made the right choice. And at the end of the year, I think the Bruins fans will know, all right, he made the right choice. Now, Chip Kelly flipping coins to see, all right, let's do Dante. Let's do Garbers. Schley, uh, let's do three quarterbacks. Let's do a running back. Wildcat. Who knows? You know, all the, all sorts of different things, right? Just flipping the flipping the it, it is what it is. Just flipping coins. But a good story, and we're glad to have Stefanovic on the UCLA roster. Can't wait to get that whole team together. It's just it's just something. What a what a time to be a UCLA fan. For good, better, for better or for worse, it, we'll find out pretty gosh darn soon. The other team on a big trip, UCLA women's basketball. We'll talk about them to kind of end up this show on Locked On UCLA. Maybe things didn't go as good as we thought. We'll talk about that coming up next on the Locked On UCLA podcast. Well, if you're trying to get to that first game, right, you really want to, and the Bruins, they're taking on Coastal Carolina at 7.30. You, you don't want to stress, but if you really wait to the last moment, you're probably going to want to download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. It's the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater events near you. Game Time is the way to go. They've got flash deals, last minute tickets. You can see views of the seats where you're sitting. So it makes it easy to know am I going to get blocked in a weird venue with some weird post in front of me? Am I got a sideways angle of nothing? What are you doing? That's why you got to go to Game Time because it's a fast growing ticketing app in the country. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Images of your seats, get tickets in just a matter of seconds, two taps in your set. They're set directly through your, to your phone so you don't have to dig through your email. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. It's their deeming code of Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, we're going to wrap up things today with Locked On UCLA. Talk about women's hoops, right? A team that's supposed to be somewhat of a consensus top tier team in the country. They bring in a former number one recruit in the transfer portal like Betts coming over. You've got the Soir, you've got Osborne, you've got all the fab freshmen turning into sophomores, two, two seniors who came back, two starting seniors like Brown and Osborne. So what are the Bruins going to do, right? How are they going to handle a, a certain situation when, you know, they're on the trip, they've gone to Africa, Germany, and 
what are they going to do? They won their first game pretty easily against Senegal, but then they played I, what I'm believing is Alba Berlin. They played this German team, and the Bruins ended up losing by six in this in this game, a game where UCLA was up by one heading to the fourth quarter. And we know Corey Close's team struggled to close out games in 22 to 23 before going on a little run to the Pac-12 tournament final and into the Sweet 16, where they would eventually find ways to close out games in the fourth quarter. Kiki Rice, actually a key portion of UCLA's team, got hurt and did not play. She exited with an ankle injury and is not going to play in their next exhibition game. So that is something to note. Kiki Rice, who is a key port of this UCLA team, a starter, only played five minutes, hit a shot, hurt her ankle. At the bottom of the release from a couple days ago, from you know, from the release of the UCLA story, it wasn't very, you know, didn't really explain a lot. And the box score is going to tell the whole story. When one of your starters goes down and only plays five minutes, but they did say she's okay, treated for an ankle, will be okay, but will not play. That's one of the things you don't want to have on one of these trips, right? For either team, the men or the women, where you go, you play, you learn, and then your starter gets hurt, and she only played five minutes. So in a game, UCLA lost to this Berlin team, 75-69, got outscored 27-20 to in the fourth quarter. Osborne actually is not starting, but she did play 26 minutes off the bench with... 16 points to lead all scores. You had Hawkes play 14 minutes. You had Betts, Brown, Muse, Bissoir, and Rice. And Rice hurt only playing five minutes. I know there's different things. But, you know, UCLA dominated one time. Close could be mixing up the lineup, everything in between, wanting to mix and match and get playing time. Cronin says the same things. I think UCLA might be doing a little more to get more players on the women's side involved. I don't know, the men's side. They're, they're running with walk-ons, too, since they're missing three potential starters or two potential starters. The women, you know, when you don't see Osborne in their starting lineup or a Hawkeyes, and you see different players getting opportunities, they want to give everybody a chance to play. And in the end, it was UCLA who shot 54% from the free throw line. They lost by six. They missed 19 free throws. 19. 23 of 42. That alone is the story. You miss 19 free throws in a game that comes down to the wire in the fourth quarter, you're going to lose those games. They shot 44% from two, 22% from three. So the Bruins are just ice cold from outside the arc and charity stripe. Those two things alone are going to cost you games. And you can live with shooting terrible from three. Osborne was three of six from downtown. The rest of the Bruins were a combined one of 12. So nobody could hit a three and nobody was hitting their free throws, including a combined 2 of 10 performance by a couple of the Bruins, right? Betts did get 24 minutes this time, 10 boards, 9 points. The transfer from Stanford, the former number one recruit, I believe, in the class of 21, to already join the top-tier recruits that the Bruins brought in from that class of 21 in for UCLA season or 22, whatever year it was. It just flies off the handle, right off the head. So it is a little disappointing to see, but... When you dive in, you can see why, right? The Bruins struggled. They're mixing and matching some lineups. They missed a ton of free throws. And it's a learning experience. Not the end of the world. Not to say that if you're a team that wants to compete and dominate in the college season this year, that when you're playing teams overseas, you want them to win them all, which is why when it said the Bruins fell, they didn't actually post the score. You have to go to the bottom of the website to click final box. But yeah, when one of your key players gets a little hurt, maybe... Some, you know, some players are a little wary of that and take it a little slower because it's an exhibition game. Not saying that's what happened, but the Bruins ended up losing on this exhibition trip. But hopefully they're having fun. It looked like they went on a safari. They've already won a game. They're one and one on this trip. And in the end, it only matters what they do in the regular season and how they lead going into March. Because in the end, we'll be laughing about this now that August is almost coming to an end and these teams will be building for November through March. So hopefully Rice is okay. The article said she was and she won't play in the next exhibition game, and Close is mixing and matching lineups to see what is the right fit, who will be the right units and right people off the bench to earn the Bruins some big-time minutes. And remember, Osborne only played 26 minutes off the bench. That's a key thing. Osborne off the bench, Kiki Rice only four minutes. They didn't hit threes, and they didn't hit their free throws, and that's pretty much the, the name of the game. 
the name of the game, despite being plus seven in the rebounding department. So they'll grow. They'll grow. But again, those fourth quarter woes came up early as opposed to the regular season. In the meantime, that's going to do it for us here on Locked On UCLA. Zach Anderson, Yox, I'm with you guys. Football, you know, it's Coastal Carolina is here. If you're an everydayer, we've been talking about the quarterback situation for so long. And now we still are going to talk about it all week, except we're going to talk about Grayson McCall. How do the Bruins stop him coming up in Locked On UCLA? What are some potential things they can do offensively with three separate quarterbacks, multiple running back options, it's still a, a deep room of wide receivers. Just seems like the Bruins are going to throw everybody out there and see who really sticks out. We'll find out for Chip Kelly and the Bruins when they play Coastal in Week 1. That's why you want to be with Locked On UCLA. Hit that subscribe button, like the episode, comment, review. Thanks for your support. Listen, watch, do both. Thank you for everything. And as always, UCLA fans, hands up. Eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see. LA. You see LA fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.